Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2 of my new series, Slipping Out. In this one, we are going to be exploring alien isolation, and I had over 4 hours of footage whilst making this video, and I've managed to condense that into 30 minutes, so we've got a lot to get through, so let's get going on this. First of all, I guess a good place to start is with our character, who in this game is Amanda Ripley, who's missing a lot of her body, in fact most of her body is missing from the back, and so are her clothes at this point. Once we're getting nice and clean in the shower, if we move the camera to the front, we can see that we do have some of our torso. And of course, this is because when the camera is attached normally, if we look down, we will be able to see that, but never from the back. And for those who are interested, here's what we look like once we're in our uniform. Alright, so now is probably a good time to explain that like a lot of games, when we move the cameras to the areas that we wouldn't normally see, or our character isn't stood in that area at the time, often they don't fully load up. Like this example, if we follow Samuels into the bridge, we only see models of the characters stood within that room, and the rest of the room isn't loaded, and you may see more of this throughout the video. When we turn the power back on at Sevastopol, we see these two characters run from one side to the other, and I thought we'd check out where they came from. Let's fly the camera down and take a look beyond the door where they run from, and are they going to be waiting behind here? Yes they are. They are waiting for us to turn the power on. And she's even got an itchy nose. That space pollen, guys. It's an absolute nightmare. On entering the Sevastopol space flight terminal, we get our first glimpse of the outside world, or should I say, believe it or not, it's space, along with the huge gas giant which I'll call Jupiter in this video, so let's have a quick look around at what's in here. Um, we can get to this second floor anyway, so there's no point looking at that, but if we take the camera up to the third floor, we can see there's no texture along the bottom of the floor where it would be, and that's because obviously we never get up there, so there's no point having that there. Let's spin the camera around and take a look out into space. And check it out. That is a big planet. It looks pretty damn cool from out here. And again, if we spin the camera around, we can also see this section of Sevastopol that we are in now. And again, there's not a lot of detail out here, but you'd never normally get to see this anyway. Then a bit later on, we get to see the Torren ship fly past the outside of the space station. So let's go and take a closer look at that. Next up, let's take a look at how moving from one section of map to another section works by using one of the various lifts we find throughout the game. Now, obviously, if we enter a lift and press the green button and the loading screen comes up, the game is just loading up the new section of map, but some lifts instantly load the new section up as soon as we press the green button. In fact, we are teleported from the lift in the original section of map to a brand new lift in the following section. I hope that makes sense. What does that even mean? I ain't seen it, but it's here. Picking us off one by one. What are you saying? A psycho? A person? No. Something. Monster. 
If, like me, you wanted to know what happened to Axel when he's dragged by the alien into this small vent, well, he's just kind of disappeared without a trace, other than the blood on the outside, of course. Transit stations now, and what happens when we press that call button? Well, if we fly the camera out, we can see that the transit system does have quite a delay, but eventually it does decide to come and pick us up. On our way to tech support, we get an awesome view of outside, and I get a really good sense of how the developers wanted to make you feel just how huge this space station really is. I'm going to speed the video up at this point, as it took at least five minutes just to fly the camera around out here. As I move the camera around the back of the space station scenery, we can see that it is mainly 2D and the textures do disappear when viewed from the back. In this shot, I tried to show just how vast the background is compared to the area of the map that we are in. It is huge out there. And if you wondered where the parts of the space station that are breaking off and flying past the window were going, well, here they go, they just kind of float right up into space and then disappear. I suppose it's about time we checked out the reason why we're playing this game in the first place. And no, I'm not showing you Ripley in her underwear again. It is, of course, the Xenomorph. And I managed to freeze it just as it drops out the vent for the first time. Check out the detail on this thing, guys. It's pretty damn cool. Whilst we're at it, let's take a look at a few animations of it killing some fools. After the killing spree's finished, where does it go? Well, it goes up into the vent and disappears, and we'll come back to that later in the video. Another awesome view of outsides, and this time it's of the satellites from the control room. Now, it is worth noting at this point the level of detail that the satellites and the backdrop have, because we will be revisiting this area again later. Just a minute ago we followed the alien into one of the vents, but what about when it comes out to play? Let's take a look at how it exits a vent. So I've moved the camera above the map and we can see that the alien is hiding up here and as it drops through the vent it passes through this blackout texture that surrounds the inside of it. 
This is just an easy way to stop the player from seeing above the map whilst giving that great illusion of darkness. If you've played the game you may remember this fellow is about to come to a tragic end but before he does let's make him useful and do something we haven't done yet and look inside a character's head and we can see he has teeth and a tongue which is quite common for most characters in the game because at some point most of them do talk. One thing I did notice is their eyes only face outwards, which you may think makes sense, but on some games we've looked at, the eyeballs face both outside and inside the head. Here we go, Dr. Kuhlman is going to get savaged by the alien behind this door. But I wanted to know what was going on behind the door when this happened, so let's take a look. So, Dr. Kuhlman enters the room, and when does the alien appear? There. It's pretty Wait, much as we start the dialogue with Dr. Kuhlman, and then as it finishes, the alien gets ready to pounce. Let's take a look at what happens next. Well, not quite as savage as I thought. It just seems to pass out with shock. Ever wanted to know what was in the inaccessible rooms whilst in the reception area on Mission 6? Well, I did, so I'm gonna show you just in case. To be honest, I was a bit disappointed to find there's not that much, and they are all the same. Another view from Space Now, this one is from the start of Mission 8, and again we get the impression from looking outside that the rest of the ship is absolutely huge out there. That is, of course, until we see it from this angle, and then we find out there's not that much more to it. Although from where we're stood in this small section of map, it does look pretty impressive. I mentioned near the start of the episode that rooms in this game don't load up until it's pretty much necessary for them to do so, which is a real shame because throughout the game there were certainly plenty of doors that I'd have loved to have seen what's behind them, like this one with the red cross on and the door that Ripley seems to be afraid of for some reason. Unfortunately, even though we can take the camera through, if there is a room beyond these doors, we wouldn't know because it wouldn't load up. I'd love to have found a secret easter egg for you guys, especially behind this scurry door, but it wasn't to be. However, later in the video there is a door that still has me confused and maybe one of you guys can help me out. Just a very quick look at Merlo's tattoos, because you don't normally get to see these so close up, and there may be a few that you miss, like the shooting star coming off the back of his left shoulder, and also this tiger with its lady friend stood alongside. Talking of Merlo, let's get to the point where we explore the crashed alien ship for the first time, and like everything else in this game, in the background it is pretty damn huge. Once we're inside, one of the things that I wanted to know was, before we get lowered on the rig, what's actually down the pit? So I flew the camera down, 
and it does go quite deep. You can see the map loading up as we move the camera further through. Eventually, of course, it does come to the end because the next part of the map has to load up when we're lowered on the rig, but you can see we're quite a long way down from the original part of the map. Of course, once at the bottom, one of the first things I wanted to do was take a look inside the eggs. Now, in these, there isn't really anything inside, it's just hollow. But again, later in the video, I'll show you some that have a little secret that they hold. But whilst we're down here, let's take a look at how far the ship goes round. Because we wouldn't normally be able to get this far. And you can see again that it's loading up and it does go quite a long way around the edge. At this point in the game we get blasted off into space and we start spinning out of control and I wanted to show you guys what this looked like from the outside and honestly guys whilst I was filming this I got about 15-20 minutes of footage of this and I got that bad motion sickness from watching the screen spin for that long. I had to stop filming for the rest of the day, it was absolutely horrendous. In fact it's making me feel sick watching this now so I'm going to turn it off. Whilst hiding in one of the vents, we get a bit of a view of Samuel beating up an android, so I wanted to show you a better view of that. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. Now if you watch carefully in the bottom right corner you see the android disappears and respawns in the position that we find him in. And what about the androids that chase us into this room and then the door shuts on them and starts malfunctioning. What are they doing on the other side? Well we hear a lot of banging but let's go and take a look at what's going on behind this door now. Well it kind of turns out not much, they just stood around waiting. Except for this one guy who's having a good think of how to get through. As we enter the reformat chamber, Samuels goes into the next room and tries to access Apollo. But it all goes wrong. Let's take a closer look at it. I'll bet. 
During mission 13, we're made to leave our weapons behind on this belt, which gives us a good opportunity to take a closer look at them. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the flamethrower, and I'm not going to spend too much time looking at this one because you can actually see this quite well when you first pick the weapon up anyway. So let's just move on to the shotgun, and the shotgun kind of surprised me because the end of the barrel is covered up so you can't see down it, whereas the revolver, we get quite a lot of detail, check out the engraving on the side. And also, unlike the shotgun, we can see all the way down the muzzle and the barrel right down to the cylinder at the end, which is pretty cool. The only fault I could find with this, even though I'd only fired two bullets, we could only see the bullet cases in the barrel, but I guess that's just kind of being picky really. Inside the Apollo core, I wanted to know when does the room appear because when I took the camera in, there was only the door waiting there. So when does the room appear with the computer inside? And you may have guessed, it appears at once the dome's set in position so we can enter it. Moving on quickly inside the reactor now, and when I first got this game I spent a long time trying to glitch out of this part of the map, because I wanted to know and wanted to see what was beneath the dark greeny blue fog that was below us. It turns out there is no floor to the reactor, it just drops away into darkness. And then when we look up, we can actually see up into the centre of the reactor. There is no bottom to that either. And it's the same story when we fly to the top of the reactor. There is no ceiling and around the outside of the walls, they just go into darkness as well. A while back we took a look inside a couple of the alien eggs and we found that they were empty, but that isn't the case with all of them. Some of the eggs that have the face huggers come out of them have a little something inside. So let's go in this egg and check it out. And here it is guys, hidden inside the egg we have this little white cube and this can be found in all the eggs that contain face huggers. Speaking of face huggers, look at this little critter I found hiding behind some boxes. We can even see its tube inside. Nasty little thing. If you remember earlier on, I did say there was a door that's had me baffled on every playthrough I've done on this game, and it's this one that's in the ambulance docking bay. The door has a handle, but it's never given me any option to open it, nor has it told me to restore power or anything else like that. But if I take the camera through, there is a collectible item on the other side. So if any of you guys know how this door opens, then please let me know. Maybe it's just something simple that I'm missing, but I'd love to find out.
We just heard there that if we leave the reactor too long, it does kill us, and here's the animation of that. Right, looks kind of weird from a third person view. Back in the control room, and remember I said about how detailed the satellites were on our last visit? Well, take a look now. If you can't remember what they look like, I will show a couple of comparison pictures too. Here's what it looks like from space when the Torrens docks with Sevastopol, and the arms pretty much extend and go straight through the side of the Torrens ship. But uh, not to worry, no one will ever know. And if you wondered where the alien was when he's not chasing us around the control room, well, he's just kind of chilling out on top of it. Jesus. Near the end now, and check it out. When the train nearly hits us, it goes straight through the wall rather than curving round with the track. I guess it was just easier to program like that. And last but not least, I wanted to know if our favourite xenomorph is waiting for us all this time behind this door. And it turns out it was there all along. So that is it for this episode of Slipping Out. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. I did have a couple of viewers request Alien Isolation, so Connor Nerhood and Donstar gameplay. I certainly hope you enjoyed this one too. Thank you also to Matty Hattie who made the camera cord for this one. I'll leave a link to his Twitter channel in the description so you can check that out. But until next time guys, as always, take care and stay slippy.